Hi, today we're going to talk about subpanels. I'm going to answer the following questions. Why are ground and neutral wires separated in subpanels? Why do we even need subpanels? When is a grounding electrode conductor necessary? And how are all these panels connected? Let's dive into these topics. First, let's look at a typical electrical panel arrangement. You'll notice three main feeder wires entering the panel. Two of these are the hot wires, one black and one red, and the third is a neutral wire. The black wire supplies power to one hot bus bar, and the red wire supplies power to the other hot bus bar. The neutral wire connects directly to the neutral bus bar. And unlike the hot wires, the neutral wire is not connected through the main breaker. In this example, the neutral wire connects to the left neutral bus bar. The bonding tie at the bottom joins the two neutral bus bars in the panel, so they're considered a single neutral bus system. You'll also notice a green bonding screw. This screw connects the neutral bus to the metal panel itself, ensuring the panel is grounded. And over on the far left is the ground bus bar. Now let's take a closer look at the bonding screw. If we turn that bonding screw, it will pass through the black plastic piece and screw into the panel itself. This bonds the neutral bus to the panel, grounding the metal enclosure. Another option for bonding is a bonding strip. This strip connects the neutral bus directly to the panel. If the bonding tie in the middle is removed, then the neutral bus will no longer be connected to the grounding system, and this is a problem for safety. Proper bonding of the ground and neutral wires happens at what's called the first point of disconnect. This is typically in the main panel, where the neutral bus is bonded to the panel's metal case using a bonding screw or a bonding strip. In some setups, there's a separate disconnect panel with only a main breaker, often located on the exterior of the home. In this case, the main disconnect becomes the first point of disconnect. Ground and neutral wires must be bonded in this panel, and this is the only place where they can be bonded. Let's look at an example of this setup. Here, feeder wires come from the meter and connect to the main breaker in the disconnect panel. A neutral wire also connects to this panel. From the main disconnect, two hot wires supply power to the main panel along with the neutral wire. Additionally, the main disconnect panel must be properly grounded using a grounding electrode conductor and a ground rod. Since the main breaker is now in the disconnect panel, the main panel no longer needs its own breaker. Additionally, the bonding strip or bonding screw in the main panel must be removed to ensure the neutral and ground wires remain separate. In this properly configured setup, the neutral bus bar and the grounding bus are not connected in the main panel. Now let's turn our attention to subpanels. Why might we need one? If your current electric panel runs out of spaces for new breakers, you might need to install a subpanel. Subpanels are also useful when you add onto your home, such as a new wing, or to power a detached building like a detached garage or a workshop. A subpanel acts as an extension of the main panel. Instead of running multiple circuits directly from the main panel, it's much easier to run one set of feeder wires to the subpanel and then connect the new circuits from there. Although subpanels look similar to main panels, there is one critical difference. You must never bond the neutral and ground wires in the subpanel. Let me explain and show why. In a subpanel, there's a neutral bus bar and a grounding bus bar. The neutral bus bar is referred to as a floating neutral because it's not bonded to the panel's metal case. If the subpanel is in a separate structure, it must have its own ground rod connected to the grounding bus bar. However, if the subpanel is located in the same building as the main panel, a separate ground rod is not required. Additionally, any bonding screws or bonding strips that connect the neutral bus to the grounding bus must be removed. For example, a green bonding screw might still be present in the subpanel, but if it's not screwed into the panel's metal case, it's not doing anything. So while the subpanel is not bonded, you'll notice that the main panel is bonded, either with this green bonding screw or with the bonding strip. Now, let's look at how panels are wired. Feeder wires from the transformer pass through the meter to the main panel. From there, a double pole breaker in the main panel connects two hot wires to the subpanel. And a neutral wire and a ground wire are also run from the main panel to the subpanel. In the subpanel, we install a breaker and connect it to the load. The hot wire runs from the breaker to the load. The neutral wire runs from the subpanel to the load. The ground wire connects to the load for safety. When everything is connected correctly, electricity flows from the main panel to the subpanel through the load and back to the transformer via the neutral wire. Ground wires remain unused in normal operation. They're only used during fault conditions. 
All right, let's explore what happens when the neutral and ground wires are improperly bonded in a subpanel. In this case, some of the current returns to the main panel on the neutral wire, but part of it flows through the bonding strip to the panel itself and then back to the main panel on the ground wire. You can see here in this animation, it shows the, some of the current flowing on the panel itself back to the ground bus and then on the ground wire and back to the main panel. And this is a dangerous situation because ground wires should never carry current during normal operation. The ground wire should only carry current during fault conditions, and that's only for a very short time. Watching this animation as things start turning pink. Everything shown here in pink has the potential to have current flowing through it because the neutral and ground wires are not separated. So this improper setup can energize the metal chassis of appliances like refrigerators, washing machines, and clothes dryers. And if there's conduit connecting the two panels together, then current will flow through that conduit. And just imagine if there's a person who is able to touch both panels or one of the panels and the conduit simultaneously, then that person also becomes part of the path for current to flow. But because they're fairly high resistance, especially compared to the metal conduit and other wires in the circuit, there's not going to be a lot of current flowing through that person. But obviously you don't want any current flowing through a person. That's why not separating the ground and neutral wires creates such a dangerous situation. All right, let's examine a ground fault condition with a properly separated neutral and ground wires. Normally, electricity flows through the hot neutral wires only. If the hot wire comes loose and contacts the chassis of a load, then current's going to flow through the ground wire, creating a high current surge. This surge of current trips the breaker almost immediately, stopping the flow of electricity and eliminating uh, further danger. However, if the neutral and ground wires are not properly bonded in the panel, then there's no path for current to flow back to the transformer. This leaves all grounded components energized at about 120 volts, creating a persistent and hazardous condition. Even with some current flowing through the grounding electrode conductor and into the earth, the resistance is too high to allow enough current to flow to trip the breaker, so the ground fault doesn't get taken care of. It's still out there and dangerous. All right, so these examples show what happens if you have a ground fault condition and you're not bonded in the main panel. Now let's look at some situations where you have the neutral and ground wires bonded in both the main panel and in the sub panel. In this first situation, a neutral wire comes loose in the sub panel while you also have the neutral and ground wires bonded in that sub panel. Let's watch what happens. First of all, no current can flow because that neutral wire is loose. And with no current flow, that load basically acts like a conductor. So it sends those 120 volts everywhere downstream along that neutral wire and since the neutral and grounds are connected, that 120 volts will be on everything connected to the ground wire as well. This is a very dangerous situation. Everything shown in red will essentially be at 120 volts. Now, you will probably get a little bit of current running through the grounding electrode conductor and into the ground through the ground rod, but it's gonna be minimal. And if there is a little bit of current, then you're gonna get a little bit of a voltage drop across that load but it's not going to be a lot. So you're going to have close to 120 volts, maybe 100, maybe 110, maybe 90. I don't know. All right, so let's remove that bonding strip from the sub panel since it shouldn't have been there in the first place. As soon as that bonding strip is removed, the current stops flowing. Now the 120 volts is limited to the hot wire and to the neutral wire between the load and the sub panel, but that's it. There is no voltage on the bare ground wire and this shows us another important reason that the grounds and neutrals cannot be bonded in the panel. All right, there's one more situation that I want to show, and that's with the neutral and grounds from the load being bonded or connected together in the subpanel. Look what happens here. You can see that the bus bars in the subpanel are not connected together, but with the neutral and ground wires being both connected to the ground bus, they're basically bonded together. So the current flows back from the sub panel to the main panel on the ground wire. And this is another very dangerous situation. And this is why the neutral and ground wires coming from the load must also be separated in the sub panel. All right, in this video, we've covered why it's crucial to properly separate ground and neutral wires and sub panels, and why we also must bond the neutral and ground at the first point of disconnect. And we've also looked at the dangers that are created if these rules are not followed. Proper bonding and separation ensures that your electrical system operates safely and prevents dangerous conditions like energized panels or current on ground wires. 
Whether it's a main panel, a sub panel, or a separate disconnect, understanding these principles is key to maintaining a safe and functional electrical system. Thanks for watching this video. I sure hope it's been helpful to you. I really appreciate you watching and I sure would appreciate you hitting that thumbs up and subscribing to my channel if you have found this useful. Thanks again. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.